Hi, my name is Chris Fay, and I'm the author of the Disaster Crime Series. Book one is a short story ebook titled Hurricane Crimes, and it involves a woman who is trapped in her house during a Category 5 hurricane with a man suspected of murder. Sounds thrilling, right? Book two is Seismic Crimes. It is the first book available in print, and it's a novel, and it is about Beth and Donovan going to San Francisco to hunt down a murderer. And as you can guess, an earthquake strikes while they are there. Lightning Crimes is a teaser story set between book two and book three, and it is free on Amazon, Smashwords, and Barnes & Noble. It is, well, I'm just gonna leave it at a teaser story. Book three is also a novel, and it is titled Tsunami Crimes. In this story, Beth and Donovan head over to Oahu, Hawaii. I'm not really going to reveal why they go there, but while they are there, a tsunami hits and Beth is kidnapped. It is a very exciting story. And it is the newest release that has come out in the Disaster Crime series. And that is why I am actually making this video because I want to do a reading for you. Now, usually a reading happens maybe in a library, or a coffee shop, a school, but why not do it where anybody can listen and watch anywhere? You don't even have to leave your home. So that is why I'm going to do a reading right now. Chapter 12. I think the coast is clear, Donovan said. He stepped out of the alley first, looked both ways, and then waved Beth forward. She joined him on the sidewalk. Her legs wobbled. I can't believe those a-holes are trying to kill us on our honeymoon. I just revealed that, didn't I? Oops, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> it's okay, baby, he stroked her hair. She shook her head. No, it's not, Donovan. It's not going to be okay. They'll follow us everywhere we go. They won't stop. We've seen at least one of them. We can ID him and help Thorne catch him. Finding him could lead us to the rest. It will be okay. She nodded again. It's true she had enjoyed, to some extent, the undercover work she did for Thorne, but she didn't want to relive what happened when they helped to take down David Buckland and Jackson Storm. As she considered this, a flock of birds flew overhead. She looked up to see not one flock, but several different species, ducks, geese, tropical birds, flying away from the coast as fast as their wings could carry them. While looking at the birds, a roaring sound grew louder. The rumble was so powerful, the windows in the shops shook. At first, she thought it was the wind, but the more aggressive it became, she realized it sounded wet. What's that noise? She frowned at Donovan in confusion. It sounds like the surf. A blast of wind slammed into Beth's back, knocking her forward. Mist swooped around her. The smell of salt tingled her nostrils. She turned to see a wall of water surging toward them. Cars were whisked away as if they were toys and palm trees were flattened. People were screaming and running past them, but Beth was paralyzed with fright. The wave reached far above the buildings it engulfed. It was massive, incredible, frightening. Tsunami. The word blazed through Beth's mind. Even though she knew what it was, it was too impossible to believe. A tsunami couldn't strike on her honeymoon. A tsunami couldn't wash her away. The thought was crazy, something that could happen in dreams or fiction, too impossible for real life. 
and yet it was happening. Donovan pulled Beth to him. She grasped his arms, fear of the wave, of not telling him she loved him, and not having a life with him beyond their wedding rippled through her, tearing her insides to shreds with long, curved talons. Water washed over her feet and flowed up her shins. She sucked in a breath a millisecond before the wave plowed into her, tossing her backward, knocking her down, and yanking her from Donovan's hold. Her body slid along the black pavement. The feel of her skin peeling away made her grit her teeth. Then the water lifted her and sent her rolling. She fought against the sheer power of it as she would fight off an, an attacker. But this wave was fiercer than any opponent she had ever faced. Terror had her flailing her arms, kicking her legs, using up more of her oxygen. The water twisted her around and around until she couldn't tell which way was up. Debris pelted her body, parts of trees, chunks of buildings, random objects from the street. She couldn't see anything in the murky, churning water, but she could feel it. Her arm got stuck in something with metal strings that cut into her skin. She tried to wrench her arm free. Her other hand grasped a tube of rubber, and she realized it was a bicycle tire. Panic rose high in her. The wire scraped against her skin. The second she pried it off, she slammed into a vehicle and rolled over the hood. Branches smacked her. Glass cut her. Desperate for air, she forced herself to go lax. When bubbles danced along her body and floated upward, she worked her arms and legs until she broke the surface. Air filled her lungs a precious second before she was dragged back down. Water flowed into her mouth and down her throat. She, she pushed herself to the top and coughed up water. Each time she made it to the surface, she gasped for breath only to be shoved under again. She paddled hard. When water pooled off her face, she blinked it from her eyes. A log floated in front of her. Holding onto it, she was able to see everything. Water lapped at the roofs of buildings. She turned to look behind her and found an endless ocean. How can there be so much water? Her eyes ticked left and right, searching for Donovan. Debris zoomed past. Large objects banged into her. Donovan! The war of the water deafened her. If Donovan was calling out to her, she couldn't hear him. A car floated past. The driver and passenger were pounding on the windows. Tears flowed down Beth's cheeks. The water was so fast she, couldn't think, she didn't think it would stop. She screamed for Donovan and searched the torrent for him. Heads bobbed up and down, but she couldn't see any of their faces. She turned her head to see a boat slam into a building. Glass and concrete flew into the air and splashed into the water. Right behind the boat was a second wave piling more water on top of the roaring flood. A gasp flew from her lips. No. She latched her legs around the log and linked her fingers. A second before the wave rushed over her, she sucked in a breath. She kept her grip on the log, but the force of the wave sent her and the log rolling as if she were in the middle of a tornado. She had to focus her strength on not releasing the log in panic. When the log bobbed to the surface, she unhooked her legs. The log rotated and brought her to the surface. She greedily inhaled air and swallowed seawater by accident. The taste, the taste of it was revolting. She gagged and coughed. The water was faster than before. Everything was a blur. White torrents surrounded her. She tried to keep her legs tucked beneath her to prevent further inju injury, but it wasn't easy. Her muscles gave out and her legs dangled below. Something wrapped around her ankle, nearly pulling her off the log. She hoisted her upper body over the log and tightened her hold. As water sped past buildings, she kicked her leg. Whatever had hooked around her ankle 
wasn't letting go. She scraped the sole of her sneaker down her leg and pushed whatever it was off her foot. At the same time, she lost her sneaker. Not having shoes could be a bad thing once the water went down, but there was nothing she could do about that now. She looked up before she collided into a building. The impact punched a yell loose from her chest. She realized she released the log to put her hands against the wall. The water was so strong, it flattened her to the building. Gritting her teeth, she clawed her way to the edge of the building and pushed around it. The moment she cleared the building, water snatched her and carried her away. She kicked her legs to keep her head above the water, but it splashed over her head. Gasping for breath, spitting out water, paddling with all her might. She battled her way to the surface when the torrents overpowered her and shoved her down. She came up and blinked water from her eyes. A tree bumped into her side and pushed her off course. As it zoomed past, she was sucked back under. Stroking with her arms, her hands cutting through water and vegetation, she made it back to the top. Pieces of long grass clung to her head. She ripped them off to see a concrete post with a light fixture at the top sticking out of the water. She aimed her body to it. When she got close, she reached out and grabbed hold of it. Fighting the water, she snaked her arms and legs around the rough concrete and latched onto it for dear life. Well, I hope you enjoyed my reading and I apologize for my little mess ups during the reading. I didn't want to do this a million times and I just wanted to do it one recording. So I hope you can forgive my little mistakes and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to read more, you can download Tsunami Crimes from Amazon, Barnes Noble, Kobo, and anywhere ebooks are sold. And you can also get the print version. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day. Bye.